assurance from our Lord. One thing I know and one thing I have found, he will always work it out. He doesn't fail. He keeps to his promises. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yourself in my life, and I've come 
lift up your right hand. to the church that we are in serious prophetic and apostolic times. God visits us with times and with seasons. You got time and seasons in your hand. You call for light. You call for life. 
Your club doesn't even show that God did anything. Yeah. On Wednesday when I went home, I could not sleep. The whole of Wednesday, the whole of Thursday, I just had to sleep for two hours. During such times, I know what it is. I call it the period of the SS anointing. On Wednesday, I wanted to really minister and prophesy to people individually. I know I'm in that time, and I know I'm in that season. And uh, but when I looked at the watch, the clock said 9 o'clock. We had to close because we didn't tell people it could be an extended service. But there is an overflow. I said there is an overflow. So this Wednesday, we're going to ask you again to come. If you like, don't. If you'd like, don't come. That's up to you. But I just want to invite you to this Wednesday again because there's a fourth river. That river is so powerful that even if you are caged, it is like an avalanche. It is like a, a tidal wave that will break all the barriers down and cause you to float a place you have never been before. I like to, when I started, I said seven super Wednesdays. Now this is what God is saying to my spirit. I want to do something new in this house. Yesterday is gone. Another day has come. Has come. Do something new. Yesterday is gone. Another day has come. Do something new. Something new. 
Sometimes the people that God wants to visit, they might not even be able to appreciate the dimension of what they have. Jesus can go to Nazareth, and because the people of Nazareth cannot make a divine demand on him, he can do what he needs to do. I just want to tell you that we are in very dangerous times, when times and seasons ordained by God and everywhere I go right now in ministry, it is characterized by great unction and divine chaos. God shifts the atmospheres and changes things, breaks down some things, and instructs some things. Pastor Nana told you that I went to a place with them. I ministered on Monday and Tuesday. What I did, I cleaned the place of all the debris of nonsense that sometimes are released by these young boys who have assumed certain mantles upon themselves that they are not worthy to carry. I want to say this after we finish ministering. The next day, a young man dared to pick up the pulpit to try and prophesy. But he told, pastor, he told the pastor that I can't see and I can't hear. Because when light comes, light replaces darkness. And you can't see. And you won't hear. If Paul walks into a city where there's a lady prophesying by the spirit of divination, by his presence there, she can't operate anymore. It's an apostolic anointing which is coming to the house. I have been ministering to you as a pastor. And as a pastor, there are things that will be tolerated. But this is an apostolic and prophetic anointing that doesn't tolerate nonsense. And it is not scary. I'm not scaring you. I'm just giving you a hint of some of the things that are going to come. Bring your family members. From now on, Wednesdays and Sundays, Bring people. Bring your family members. Bring those who are in trouble. Bring them. And see what God will do. Early this morning, there was a young man sitting up here. And God zeroed in on him. And God took me right to their bedroom. Don't worry. If I come to your bedroom, my eyes will be holy. And God visited them. You want to talk to him about bedroom matters? Things, discussions that go on between his wife and him. Things that he has not been able to articulate. I was dealing with some anger in him. I was dealing with some things in him that needed to be dealt with by God. If you can ask, that is what I do. As students will tell you, when we go to Brazil, that's what God does. God takes me prophetically into people's homes and begin to say things to them that no man has ever heard. You know what? You never know that whether it is your time and your season. You never understand. It is only God who does it. And if you don't, if you are not at that particular place, if you are not at the place where he wants to be, where he can be of, of a benefit to you, you would only hear about it. But you will not be a partaker, a participant of his blessing. There's a river that is flowing in the house. The river of God's gladness and God's goodness. And I'm encouraging everybody to be around on Wednesdays and on Sundays because you never know where we will travel. There's a place God is taking people. 
People are going to come into finances such as they have never come before. Madam, come on. Yes. You know what? God intentionally sometimes lifts people in their family. And there's one of the things he does with them. He picks them up from a place of loneliness and begins to climb with them. And begins to climb with them. And he makes them a showpiece for the rest of the family. Then come the warfares. Then comes the misunderstandings. Then comes the animosity. There comes people who think that maybe they should be the people who should be advancing. And even though they are living in pleasant places, because your feet have been laced with oil, and because he has dipped your feet in oil, that your wings are going to be lifted up far above. And the, and the level of prosperity, tell your husband that I said that the, the business deals that have long delayed, that doesn't look like coming through. Tell him wherever he goes to church, that I speak as a man of God, that the doors are opening. Because your prayer for his ascendancy, your prayer for his upliftment, your prayer for his promotion, your prayer for his wealth, that is what is the wind that carries him. And in the name of Jesus, before the Lord whom I stand, there are changes that are coming. By the breaking of this year, the kind of things that God is going to do, your horn is being exalted as the horn of the unicorn. And no more shall anyone look at you and look at you with disdain. But they shall look at you with celebration. And they shall look at you. Why? Because he has moved you from down below to an upper place. There is an overflow of the oil upon your life and no one can take it away from you. That says the Lord. That same angel is walking in the midst of the people here. And he's picking people up. I want to be a vessel. You can. steps of destiny and these three steps are going to show manifest transitions in your life transition, the first transition was a transition of pain and the first transition was a transition of lack and want the second transition is a transition of signposts that God is bringing signposts indicators of where he wants to take you but the third step is a step of laughter the third step is a step of the overflow. Wanna be more? When I take, then you take one and lift up your hands and be ready. What oh, God wants to. Ah, ah. Take one step with me. First step. That has to deal with the past. There's a hand working in the past, overturning. Overturning, overturning, overturning failure, overturning disaster, overturning want, overturning life. Oh, oh, no, be more. Step two. The signs are there. Oh, the signs are there. Be more like you. Moving into step three, the place of laughter. What in the name of Jesus? You work through. Ah, wanna be more like you. Come on, someone lift up your hands right now. Ah,
lift up your hands right now. Get, let's just get ready. I just want to give you a foretaste of what is going to happen on Wednesdays. Lift up your hands. I crack open the padlocks. I crack open the padlocks. I break out. I liberate you from the padlocks. I liberate you. It's a new season of I wanna be a vessel you went through It's a new season It's a new season Days and don't miss the Sundays because anything can happen. There's a strong prophetic and apostolic anointing. The pastoral anointing tolerates, but the prophetic and, and apostolic anointing has no room. Life can be lost, life can be gained in the presence of the prophetic and in the presence of the apostolic, depending upon how you, you hold it. When someone came and said to Simon, here is money, take. And he said, your money perish with you. Every sorcery, every occultic and everything, incantation that has been leveled against that fight in your bloodline, you are an exception. Amen. You are an exception. Amen. You don't mess around with those things because... In the presence of the prophetic also, there can be very serious disasters. I'm looking at people, and some of you, there are things, lifestyles, and garments you're wearing, you need to take off. I don't want to disgrace you. But guess what? Children who know nothing can try to fool around the prophetic in the days of Elisha. And so they were calling him bald-headed man, bald-headed man. Bible says he turned and a bear came out of the forest to devour them. Children, they don't know anything. But they are playing at particular junctions of the prophetic you can't play with. Ruth, lift up your hands. Make my way My to Yes, sir. 
There's an angel standing right behind you. May my wealth. There's an angel standing right behind you. With a sword drop. You're coming out of you're coming out of a hole. You're coming out of a hole. And there's a light shining. Greater heights. Greater prosperity. More businesses. Your hands shall be inundated. You may not even have hands. You are going to start a school. I see it coming. A school. People are going to come for you to teach. Mm. Businessmen, lift up your hands. Uh, and businesswomen. see people it's like an open book beginning to even someone called me my wife was there someone called me the person might be listening and I began to tell the person from the past what God was doing then I landed on the present and I began to tell the person where God is taking the person Do you know you become senior partner I said you will become senior partner. You wait and see. I told you about partnership before you got here. Is it true? Now you are going to climb into senior partner. You wait and see. My boy. demand on me. Come and make a demand on the oil, on my life. Come and make a demand. Where there is no demand. You see, the people don't know how to make a demand. To make a demand is to start praying before you even come for the service. And say to God, whatever it takes, speak through, speak through this man and touch my need. And when you come, you don't sit down quietly but you are there making that demand. You are there making that demand. God is not afraid of noise. God is not afraid of noise. And you are there to make a demand and tell God, we are here. Not because of me. Let this channel work. Let this channel flow. If you don't make a demand... A couple of friends had, a, had another friend who was in dire straits. He was paralyzed and he couldn't walk. And the Bible said, these friends said, we have heard that Jesus is there. And when they came, they came to the house 
And that house was totally blocked. It was full capacity. Every place was full. There was no place. But the Bible said, these men said, we have come too far to go back carrying our friend again. So we know what we're going to do. The Bible says, they climbed the roof and they started breaking the roof. So you can see Jesus preaching. Then all of a sudden, a shard of roof breaks down on the floor. Then the owner of the house should be very worried. But they don't care what the owner said. There are some people who are owners here. And their presence is like a roof. And so you need to break that roof and tell them, I don't care. I came here to be blessed. And what you then begin to do is to tear down the roof. And when they tore down the roof and then they put the place, paper, person there and Jesus said, man, it is not because I desire to do a healing. Because you were not on my timetable. You were not in my horizon. But because of the persistence of the people who brought you, if their faith alone is enough to get up and walk. Let's make a demand on anointing. Hallelujah. They are even quiet. Look at them. Why am I kata? Eboniso. Why am I? Emma. It's a Why am I cut I need to preach. But there is a dove that is, is flying over this place. All the business people lift up your hands. Father to child. Spirit to spirit. I'm lifting business people up. With your breath of life, that's how I came. That's how I came. Hey! 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 Father to child. Father to With your breath of life, that's a businessman. Lift up your hand, businessman. Even if you work in an office, lift up your hand. Or you want to do business? Sit father to child, father to child.
Father, in the name of Jesus, everyone whose hands are lifted up, locate that person. Locate somebody right now in the midst of your people. Locate somebody right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody is going international. Jesus. Somebody is going to open a warehouse. Somebody is going to open a warehouse. That people are going to buy and load. Somebody is going international. Somebody is becoming a warehouse. Somebody is becoming a warehouse. Somebody is becoming a warehouse that people are coming to load and people are going to carry goods. Somebody is going international. Shops, 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 shops. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe your name upon me. Breathe. You're now a high. Your name is your name. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. In the name of Jesus, breathe upon businesses. Jesus. Breathe upon workers. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I thank you, Father. Amen. Please be seated. I need to teach. I know you don't want me to stop, but Wednesday, the sign of things to come. Wednesdays and Sundays now. There are no more our normal Sundays. No more our normal Wednesdays. We are thinking of adding a Friday to it. So we are working out the modalities. A Friday extended time. We are thinking. It means I, I need to be ministering on Wednesday and on Friday and on Sunday. Two services. We are working out the modalities. I have to use wisdom. No more the young man of 30 years who thought I was a general manager of a universe. I have been called to save everybody. Even Christ couldn't save everyone. So. I need to add wisdom to it. But this morning, quickly capture another people, another set of people you should avoid in your walk towards destiny, in your walk towards the place where God brings you to fulfillment. There's another set of people. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1 to 5 is very clear. And God said, There are some people I don't want you to fellowship with. He talked about the Canaanites. He talked about the Hittites. He talked about the Gegashites. He talked about the Amorites. He talked about the Perizzites. And he talked about the Hivites. There are two other nations that I have not tackled. One of them this morning, ladies and gentlemen, the Jebusites. The Jebusites. The Canaanites are dangerous people. And the Jebusites are more dangerous. The more closer you approach the Jebusites, the more closer you fellowship with the Jebusites, the more your dreams will die. The more your dreams will never see a reality. If you fellowship with these Jebusites, you are going to come to a place where you see dreams with promise. And then promises will evaporate. You will see things coming up that are glorious. One way or the other, it will not happen. There are people who fellowship around Jebusites. And they don't know that it is the reason for their failure. It's not because God's hand is short. Not because God is not powerful. Not because God is, has a, a, a capacity deficiency. Not because God hasn't got the riches and everything that it takes to fulfill his word and to bring to pass the promises that he has made. But it is because of the presence of these Jebusites in your, in your life. Now, Jebusites, uh, the meaning of that, of, that, of that language is trodden. That is to stamp upon, to walk upon. To, 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 to trample under your feet and to place everything under your feet. I want to tell you this. Jebusites are those people who stand upon your, your dreams, who stamp upon your dreams, who tread upon your dreams, who tell you that your dreams cannot happen. In the book of 2 Samuel, the book of 2 Samuel, there's a scripture there that 
actually describes the character of the Jebusites. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 6. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem. It wasn't called Jerusalem at that time. But David wanted to make sure that there is no memory of the Jebusites there, so he removed their name. It was the city of Jebusites. The king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites. So turn to somebody and said, do I smell Jebusite? Do I smell like Jebusite? If you are not saying it, you are one. Or you can tell somebody, uh, you, uh, tell your father, that, do I smell Jebusite? You can also look at this and can't burn. Now you, you, you can, or, or there are some people with Jebusitic spirit. Jebusitic spirit. So there are some people you need to change their name to say Jebus. To tell someone, should I call you Jebus? Jebus. Jebusites. As their name is, so are their character. Because they trample upon, and the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, which speak unto David. The Jebusites are three things they do. They think, they speak, and they act. So you can always see a Jebusite by the three things they do. They speak, they think, they speak, and they act. And sometimes you will see them speak in some way. You see them think in some way. Sometimes they don't communicate to you, but it is in their head. And I'll show you how. So when I finish, or when I say Jebusite, then you take a good look at somebody just in case. So that if that person carries a Jebusitic spirit, that person will be totally delivered. And look at what and the king and his men went to Jerusalem on the Jebusite, the inhabitants of the land, which speak unto David, saying, Except thou take away the blind and the lame, thou shalt not come in hither. Thinking David cannot come in hither. I even if he comes, the blind and the lame are the people who ward him off. That he can't, he can't, I mean, the, uh, David, who are you? We will not even fight you. The blind and the lame. Look, the only way you can win is get rid of the blind and the lame. They are telling David that you, you don't fight with normal men. You don't fight with people who can, who are men, who can see. You can't fight, you are not fighting with people who are uh, and this thing, that we are leaving the blind and the lame to fight you. Is somebody sleeping? Is somebody sleeping? Okay. The Lord is talking to the person in a dream. So let's go. So here is the thing, the Jebusites. And they said, even the blind and the lame will ward you off. That means you have to take, you have to fight the blind and the lame. And the Bible said, Thou shalt not come in hither, thinking David cannot come in hither. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion. You understand? First, it was called uh, the city of the Jebusites. Then David took it and said, this is Mount Zion. I am taking Mount Zion. And I'll show you how we can take Mount Zion. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion. May every stronghold that men have said you can't climb, may you break through and take that stronghold. May they come and fall at your feet. In the name of Jesus, I move the mountains and I level them. May every mountain be leveled and may every valley be exalted. May the people who live on the mountaintops and they look down upon you and they say nothing can come. In the name of Jesus, hey. jump from your chair and say, they are coming down. You know one thing? Sit down. So the, in the way they think, in the way they speak, and the way they and they told David. Then look at what David did. Read this scripture. Nevertheless, David took, and David said on that day, Whosoever getteth up to the gutter. Now, normally gutters are down. But they say, Whosoever getteth up. To the gutter and smited the Jebusites and the lame and the blind that are hated of David's soul. He shall be chief and he shall be captain. So you see, your ascendancy to the throne, your ascendancy to the place, your captainship, your chiefdom, your place of elevation, your place of promotion is, is based on how you deal with the Jebusites. Wherefore, they said, the blind and the lame shall not come into the house. David, the way he was treated, 
He said, anytime he remembers the blind and the lame, he remembers what the Jebusite said to him. So he said, I don't want them in my presence anymore. But here's the key. Here's the key. You know what? Look at what they said. The blind and the lame. So the Jebusites, David wanted to take a city and they said, you can't do it. The Jebusites, there are two things they do. Number one, they discourage you. Number three, they denigrate you. And number three, they destroy. They discourage you. And they denigrate you. Um, you don't understand English? Okay, denigrate is put you down. But I'm, I'm dealing with the bees. That's why. I want to tell you that I studied Thesaurus. You don't even know what Thesaurus is. I did. So, they will discourage you and they will denigrate you. It's spelled D-E-N-I-G-R-A-T-E. Denigrate. That is put you down. Criticize unfairly. Criticize unfairly. Make mockery of you. Make you lose confidence. That is, they will run you down and they will run your dreams down. Ah, there are many people who have squandered their dreams whose dreams are lost. What you said you can be, and they said you can't be, all of a sudden you have thrown away that dream, and now you walk in the valley of the Jebusites. But today, you have been picked among the Jebusites. That is not your place. And may their strongholds fall. May their hold over your life, and may their confession they made, that trapped you in, 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 in a time space, and you can't move out of that time space. May that May that, may that capsule be broken in the name of Jesus. May you be free and break out of it. You know one thing they said? When they said that the Bible said, I said they come to discourage you. They come to denigrate you and they come to destroy. They destroy your dreams. They destroy your potential. They disarm you. They, make, they want to make sure that you can never rise up to that place. Anything you say you can do, they said you can't. And they come in very, very, very insidious ways. They come in very, very, very different ways in which the, oh yes, I can say confidently because I've had encounters with Jebusites. And today, their strongholds have been broken and I own their places. In the name of Jesus. They go to places and when my name is mentioned, they tremble and they say, he used to know him. He used to be our friend. I am not your friend anymore. Now, I am man the God. Yeah. I didn't call myself nigga. Why did you call me that? I need to dislocate your jaws. Who said mercy? Did I add you two to it? Right, let's go and now this is what they said to David. And you can see the Jebusite, they happen everywhere. In, in, in 2 Samuel chapter 6, you will see the same thing. 2 Samuel chapter 6. When David came, I think verse 18. 2 Samuel chapter 6 verse 18. You see the same thing. You will see a Jebusite. And a Jebusite can even be your wife. And a Jebusite can be your husband. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, I think verse yeah, 18, right. And as soon as David had made an end of offering, burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. Ah, he blessed. So at that material moment, David was a carrier of blessings. So David was a carrier of blessings for the people. So David was an instrument to transfer spiritual energy, divine force, divine favor to those people. He blessed them. That means he released them into something. He released something upon them. And sometimes people don't know. The pastor can come ready to release something. But a look at your face would prevent him from releasing that blessing. It is true. It is true. I have sometimes come to church. I want to say something. And I see somebody's face. I said, they don't need it. Let me take it to them. Um. In those days when we come to church, 
You know, I can just go and pick somebody who is nobody, who doesn't even have a job, and lay hands on that person, and that person becomes a millionaire. Then I realized something. Once they come into money, then they begin to bluff, and they begin to do all sorts of things. So I looked at them, and I said, Chai, this one, no go be. So now when I feel that edge, I place it upon my head. Why? Because charity begins at home. But now I've been liberated. I'm extending the hand to you. David came to bless. And after he had blessed the people of Israel, so you see, this is the problem. Sometimes the outsiders get blessed and the household people miss the blessing. David had come to bless. He had blessed. Now let's go to 20. Then David returned to bless his household. And Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, how glorious was the king of Israel today who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servant as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovereth himself. Now, let's go to where Michal was standing before to achieve this thing. In verse 19. No. Or, or something before. 17 or this time. Yeah, please, before. And where Michal was standing. Now, and as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, ah, it is my city. I am the authority. I am the principality. Like I'm the principality in this house. You may not like my nose. When you look at my nose, and you even want to frown, smile. Because the principality. If you don't smile, and my nose says, mm, mm, it can change your destiny. And guess what? I'm just making fun. But it's true. <laughs> but guess what? As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal saw his daughter, looked through a window, and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. So her, dis her despising him in her heart. So I said, sometimes the Jebusites, it is in their heart, they don't speak, but it is there. But you see, what is in your heart will find a way to express itself one day or the other. You can't tell me you love me and the, the, it will express itself. Your love for me will be expressed by your touch. When you touch me, I know that mm, this one you can put me to sleep. Then I'll begin to sing, baby, careful. Do you understand that? So it's expressing. What is in your heart will find a, an expression. And don't think that people know but they are just quiet. They don't say it. If you don't love your husband, he knows. He knows. If you don't love your wife, he knows. Because the expressions are there. It's, it's there. The way you even talk, the way you even touch, the way you even hold. You know, there's a touch when they touch you. It's as if prisoners have just been arrested. There's also a touch when they touch you, like something. You say everything in your head. That's, let's go on. Now, from verse 20. From verse 20. Please, today we'll close at 12.45, eh? I'll try. Now, give me verse 20. And David returned to bless his household, and Michal, the daughter of came out to meet David. Yeah. I said, what is in their heart will find expression. So, it will find a way to express itself. And said, how glorious was the king of Israel today? The way I'm saying it is even nice. How glorious was the king of Israel today? Ah! Abba! Cho! is in there. Eh? He said it in tree. She, 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 she. She, she, she. Nana. She, she, nana. Not this one. Maybe. She 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 na na. She 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 na osa. She 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 na na osa. She osa osa she. Osa ti she 
é, Lune. O Lúnio. Um time, no time. Please. He dances very well. The kangaroo one is special. That's what mesmerizes his wife. From Lake Johnson. Let's go. Now guess what? Say, look at the way he danced today. Uncovering himself. And guess what? If you want to insult your husband, just insult him. Look at what she said again. Who uncovered himself today?
for prayer to empower especially all the men. And I think that we need to jump into this. Oh, why don't you celebrate the man of God? Me, I don't want to be a victim of this when I'm alive. Wonderful. Wonderful. So please, please, what, what, I, what I said on Wednesday, people think it's a joke. But Ministry of Tourism, they've actually announced in December, if they catch you and you don't have a car to show that you have been vaccinated, you can't buy pure water. You can't buy house of cuckoo. There, there, there are some places, oh no, you sit down and laugh. You'll be shocked. You cannot go to some places. So we are making it easy for you right after. I have done one, it's left with one. Right after, I'm going to get it done. Because there are times that when I go around mommy, she wants to suck me. So I want to just end that battle today. Then I'll be free. Hallelujah. Oh, if you are excited in the house, why don't you clap? Why don't you shout, give God praise? Let's bring the service to a close. If you are here, sisters keepers, mommy D would like to meet you at where Mona's place is for a short you know, meeting. Sisters keepers, you know yourself. Just try and meet her very quickly. I believe that God will be a blessing to you. Why don't you put your hand on your chest? So who are we? Uh, People-oriented church, passionate about God's word, pursuing his glory, and persuading others to do the same. and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. You shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Mommy loves you. Daddy loves you. We'll see you here on Wednesday 6 p.m. sharp. Come make a demand. <laughs>